Stu, thanks for cruising by, bud. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, I wish we had a microphone for you, but uh, that just shows you that these are just props. So <laughs> you can just talk. Uh, so uh, real BMX, yeah, right out the gate. I'll boom you. <laughs> World of X Games, June 9th. Excited for that show. Yep. All the videos currently on xgames.com right now, so you can vote yeah. on those. Um, you've been behind this for every single real BMX, so the 2018 edition. How's this one rank compared to the previous ones? Oh, it's up there with the other two shows, I think, yeah. yeah really really uh, high quality riding, good edits, uh, great filming, music selection, dudes go in. Yeah. We filmed the whole show in this Longhorn Network studio in late March and had maybe all the pros and filmers sitting in a conference room down the hallway <laughs> and um, kind of just had to like put the hammer down like, guys, no drinking. No smoking cigarettes around here, like, and they all like <laughs> just sat in a conference room and behaved for about three hours, which was yeah. Well, if you can good. believe that, I yeah. was gonna ask, yeah. were they already doing that in the conference room? Like, you no. tell us now. But it was like a Sunday afternoon. Right. Nobody was riding or doing anything. We just asked them to sit still for a few hours. That's a tall order with that. Yeah, group, yeah. a little yeah. counterintuitive, yeah. I think, for those guys. So let's talk about this field, 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Run me through. Who are these guys? Uh, we have Corey Martinez, uh, Brad Sims. Colin Verniak, Tom Dugan, Kevin Peraza, and Sean Ricani. Awesome. Um, Sean Ricani and Colin are both New Jersey BMX yeah. riders. I'm from New Near Jersey. Dear to you, I know. <laughs> and um, it's always said in skateboarding that New Jersey produces the best skateboarders. Yes. And it's quickly becoming the same. A BMX hotbed? <laughs> yeah, for BMX. Yeah. That's been for quite some time. But and also one of the judges is from New, New Jersey, Scotty Kramer yeah. as well. So. Yeah, let's talk about this judging panel. This is yeah. as good as you guys have had in years yeah. past. Yeah, Scotty Kramer, Dennis Anderson, Trey Jones, all uh, over the place, yeah. Trey Jones is a little bit of a dirtbag in the best sense of the word from Orlando, Florida. Hillbilly. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Showed up like in cut off <laughs> jeans and like a, a shirt all cut up with like bad beavis and butthead tattoos he did himself. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're writing the intros for it, and I was like, I gotta give him, because he usually just takes his shoes off all the time wherever he is. So I, like, I ended it with, like, for this episode, we've asked him to wear shoes. And Stu found a clip of Trey rolling into a pool with no shoes on, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah, of course. So it, it times up perfectly. Usually, usually his kit is just Daisy Dukes. I like this frayed yeah. denim look. Yeah. I, I can get with that aesthetic. <laughs> and he pretty much only eats gluten. Yeah. Oh, he's on a, gl a gluten yeah. diet. Yeah. CC's pizza yeah. three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. as popular as but, uh, the uh, counterpart. It, it, he's he was a great judge, but he's a magical bike rider too, and he's just yeah. I can't say enough good things about him. Mm -hmm. Very well rounded. Okay, so I mean, you guys obviously have a hand in in this whole thing, Stu. You've been filming and producing BMX video parts for you know videos what twenty five yeah. years plus twenty twenty plus years. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean to date you. Um, <laughs> Quite all right. married. This process of of picking riders, yeah. uh, that to me feels like half the battle right there because I, I would oh, imagine yeah. it's a long list to yeah, get on that. Yeah, thing. there's so many riders out there in this day and age that are capable of putting together like an amazing video part. Like, it's almost overwhelming having to narrow it down to six guys. But I mean, there are a lot of factors that you want to you know consider. You know, ha has the rider put out you know an amazing video part in the past? Are they good at working with a filmer as a team? You know, um, who, you have to think about who they might pick as their filmer too, because that's important. Um, these videos are being filmed over a very short time period, a matter of a few months. You know, and usually when a rider films a video part, they, they can take up to a year or two to do it, you know? Right. Um, a lot of work that goes into it, you're fighting injuries, you know, security at these spots, like there's, there's a lot of factors. So, you know, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna get guys you want a diverse field too. You want you know six guys that all bring something different to the table. Right. You know you want to show people different styles of riding because there's not just one way to do BMX. You know like especially street riding. You know there's yeah. a lot of different a lot of different flavors. You know so you want to try and encompass a lot of things and really give like your audience uh, you know a full taste of what what's yeah. out there when it comes to bike riding. And I mean we're also like trying to appeal to a bigger audience outside of BMX. Oh yeah. So I mean. We always need that wow factor with someone, and this year it was Tommy Dugan jumps off buildings on West 29th Street in oh, Austin. Man. And it's just like, 
I, I mean, I talk to page one of ESPN.com a lot of times to try to sell videos to them, and they're like, who's the guy that's jumping off the building? Yeah. I can tell you, as someone who doesn't ride BMX, like the these parts and the trailer and everything, the way it was done, I'm so excited yeah. for this June 9th for this World of X show because I'm, I, I get excited watching yeah. these. So yeah. I, I, one question I do have, and I'm, I'm curious because I always ask whoever's behind, whether it's Real Street or Real Wake or any of our real contests, Real Snow, how do you patrol or snuff out uh, footage that comes in if you think it came out like uh, bef without outside of sort of the the given timeline yeah, right because guys yeah. are always sitting on clips yeah, yeah that may yeah. not make the cut for whatever part they're filming mm -hmm. for yeah. but they're like damn yeah. this is perfect for it is there any way to police uh, that i mean if you have to you can kind of pay attention to how the bike uh, the rider has their bike set up right stickers all that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. but a lot of these guys are you know they're pretty. They're pretty. Uh, they feel lucky to get the invite right. to this thing, yeah, and like, they take it seriously. They'll play it so, honest. So yeah, they're 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 pretty honest. You With know? Chris Cole and skateboarding, we we looked at his shoes a few times. Right. Oh yeah, because he was done with DC. Yeah, yeah, but he was in DC for a few clips, and we were like, and but it was still within like the amounted right. range. So we were like, okay, I guess it works. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, this year Corey Martinez's intro, they. De or they basically like got him on a bike that he rode in the year 2000 and, and made him wear like a tank top and camo shorts, which is what he wore in the year 2000. Yeah, throw back to his old kit. But they they dressed him up in it, but it looked like it was straight out of the year 2000. Yeah, and I know a that, recreation. I know that there was like a little bit of like, I'm, when I first saw it, I was like, well, we can't use this because it's like 18 years old. Yeah. <laughs> but... They uh, realized the hairline wasn't as strong yeah. as it had, had been previously, so. You mentioned before, yeah, it's it like, it, it really is, um, this is a contest, not just for the rider, but really the relationship with the filmer. Both guys oh, yeah. get a medal. Yeah. The, just how important it is, um, that relationship, and what goes into, especially as you said, you've only got such a limited time to put something together. Um, there's, there's just, there's got to be some simpatico between those two, but this is really just as much a filmer award oh, as it is sure. a BMX. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the tricks these guys are doing, they're dangerous, and, and they have a lot of time invested in them, a lot of energy, and uh, you know, if you're going to do that, you want to be able to know 100% that you can trust your filmer to, to handle his, his end of the deal. You know, um, yeah, you just, it, it's a lot of work, and you have to know this guy's got my back. And we're doing this as a team, you know, because right. you can't, neither, neither guy could do it without the other. Yeah. Have you ever had a situation where someone wanted to do something and you said, I don't think you should do this? And you. Me personally? Yeah. Filming? Uh, there are. Like Sean Burns. There are definitely a handful of times where I didn't think what the rider wanted to do was a very good idea or a safe bet. But a lot of the times, you know, that rider knows better than I know what they're capable of. So I'm not going to tell someone. You know, I don't think you should do this. Uh, you know, this isn't safe. I mean, they already know it's not safe. But if you put that ounce of doubt in their head, you know, they, they've pretty much already made up their mind whether they're going to try the trick or not. So if you, if you say, oh, I don't think it's a good idea, then you're just putting, you know, you're just putting doubt yep. in their head. And right. then that's, that's when they're going to get hurt. So I, I trust their instincts and, you know, um, you know, they know if they're going to be able to, to do it or not. What Sometimes it that? doesn't work out. Sometimes it does. Did you but. film the clip of Burns jumping off that building when the woman started screaming? I wasn't there for that oh, one, okay. no. Right. I do have plenty of Sean Burns clips that okay. him and of, Brian of Kaczynski, they're, they're responsible for a lot of these gray hairs. Got it. Yeah. 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 It's a stressful situation. Being a filmer, it's, you know, you, you know, something very dangerous is about to happen and you have to stay focused on that, but you have all these outside elements, you know, people that don't want you on their property or, you know, just police or just anything, passers-by, cars, you, you know, you're, you're trying to focus on getting the job done and, you know, it's, you, there's a lot of, a lot of things to tune out while you're how, doing that. How, it's that's stressful. interesting. How counterintuitive is it for someone like you who's spent his entire career filming BMX mm -hmm. and filming parts and, and for such esteemed video, I mean, Anthem 2, Dan's Comp, some of the, some of the great videos and DVDs, now all of a sudden is switching gears to this role, especially like producing a show made for television mm -hmm. that's really primarily focused on interviews yeah. and capturing B-roll. Yeah. Is that such a different zone for you? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, it, it is. It is a, it's a different zone. It's, uh, it's really fun. It's like way more laid back because 
I don't have the huge pressure on me to get the clip. Right. You know, um, I can just kind of creep around in the shadows and film the behind the scenes and like try and help tell the story about all the work that goes into this, you know? Um, oh, I kind of lost that a little bit. Uh, but anyway, so it's like, oh, I'm sorry. It was there. gold. Yeah, I mean, there's like a wonderful moment in the behind the scenes with Brad Sims, where his filmer, Christian Regal, broke his foot right before they oh, started yeah. filming. And they're talking about like, how is he gonna film with this big boot? And then you see Christian climbing with this boot on and yeah. Stu was filming that like close yeah. up. <laughs> and it made me laugh out loud, yeah. LOL. Basically, I want to, I want to be able to show the, this mainstream audience, you know, all the right. work, all the passion that goes into this. And I want them to be able to appreciate, wow, this is, you know, it's a little video and these guys make it look easy, but it's not easy. Right. You know, that's kind of the smoke and mirrors of the whole thing. It goes together and it looks flawless, but it, it really is a lot of work. And for me, uh, taking on that role, producing the show, uh, you know, I want to be able to, uh, you know, have this audience you know, and maybe, maybe some of the kids in the audience are like, oh, I, I, I think I might be interested in BMX, but, you know, if I, I see a traditional contest, and that doesn't really speak to me. Right. But I can see something like this, and I realize that I don't have to be in front of a huge crowd. I can go out with my friends. We can pedal around. We can pull the camera out when we're feeling it, on the day when we're feeling it. You know, I don't have, I don't have a time clock. And, uh, you know, that might resonate with some kids, and they might think, you know, I could I could get into this aspect of BMX. You know, the other the other thing maybe that's not so much for me, yeah. but this this really seems to speak to me. That's a neat dynamic. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean a lot of the stuff too. Like, I mean I remember Sean Ricaney being 12 years old at the skate park when I still lived in New Jersey and mm -hmm. thinking like, someday that kid's gonna be awesome. And now he's like the pro getting video parts on yeah. ABC for the World of X Games. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's crazy to just watch the progression. Yeah, and too. and a lot of these guys, it's, you know. X Games and it's their first exposure to BMX, yeah. you know, to like yeah. actually seeing, you know. Well, and that's the beauty. We talk about this all the time, Brian and I. Uh, the, the real series allows us to uh, be immersed into a world and athletes that we would otherwise never get to see, yeah. Yeah. right? Because contest cats are a certain way and they're <laughs> wired a certain way, and we see that same group. Yeah. each and every year and maybe a couple yeah. ams kind of flow in and out mm -hmm. but we get uh we get to be introduced to characters in this case bmxers that maybe would never ever get to see on yeah. the x game stage and i think that's really dynamic which takes me to my last question because we talked about this in real street is there um like real bmx is awesome and the real series is just so good across the board had this been around 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, who's that one rider for both of you guys that if given the opportunity that you would have loved to have given it a go in, in, this, in this format, in this contest? That is such a broad question. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a big off the top of my head, I would definitely want to see Mike Tagg do something. He is like one legendary street rider, passed away in 2012. But I mean, he was always that lurker guy that would film stuff on his own and do crazy stuff on his own. And um, if I wanted to get much more in depth, <laughs> I hate I hate to even bring his name up in here, but Bob Sherbo is like another New Jersey guy who would hate being on television, but would probably produce a great video part. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'd have to go with a writer like Ian Schwartz. Uh, he was like a no peg, breakless, free coaster rider, mm -hmm. kind of like ahead of most of the curve, you know. So and it's kind of a guy that like really chose his own path in BMX, and I think, you know, seeing something like that is always it always uh, holds a lot of weight in, it, in, it, yeah. in this type of scenario, totally. you know, where you're bringing something totally fresh to the table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he actually would have been awesome. Yeah, it's it's built for something like that. Yeah. yeah, someone that's unique. And yeah. yeah, and I mean, I, I mean, with, with someone like Ian Schwartz too. If we threw a camera in his face at a competition, he would have run the opposite yeah, direction. Yeah, couldn't handle it. <laughs> couldn't handle it. But that's the thing is like you, we're going to like their playing field when we do this contest. You know? Well said. And yeah. He's got you know that's this is where they're comfortable, where they can perform at their peak. You know, on their own schedule. Right. So that's that's a that's a big deal to a lot yeah. of those guys. You know. Yeah, I think about it on the at least on the skate side to relate. You know, I look at like it was crazy to me that we even got a guy like Dylan Reeder to compete at like street league 
Mm -hmm. And I think there was a little bit of like an alien workshop, deer deck kind of handshake connection there. Yeah. But it was like the fact that Dylan Reader was skating a contest yeah. was so unreal. And then the fact that we got him in Real Street mm -hmm. was amazing. Yeah. But I think that speaks to like Dylan's speed, yeah. you know? So it's cool when you can see that, certainly on the BMX side. Yeah. So. Well, I remember one, I think he skated in X Games in Los Angeles one year and took his shirt off. And the women that I worked with for digital were all very happy about. Yeah. That. Oh, a Dylan Reader shirtless. Yeah. 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 Gone. Gone too soon. But yeah. uh, Team Handsome. He mm -hmm. was. Uh, he was the captain of that ship. It was. Uh, it was great to have him on the X Games stage. Yeah. We did. But uh, I digress. Um, that's great, man. I'm. I'm excited yeah. about this. Videos, as we said, on XGames.com right now. Anything else for you, Brian? I mean, I could still talk about people I'd love to see video parts. <laughs> well, if you got any more. <laughs> I mean, normal. Austin, where we live, is like the home of like. Oh, yeah. Some original mm -hmm. street riding, like it started with this company called Homeless Bikes in the 90s. And seriously, right down the street is like where a lot of the first handrails yep. were done on bikes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Kevin Gutierrez is like a San Antonio legend. If if it was 1992, he could have won real street or yeah. real BMX. Yeah, I always, we always say if, if, if real could have coincided with the actual start of X Games back in like 95. Oh, yeah. It would have been incredible. What a treasure trove yeah. of like video parts that yeah. we would have, oh, you know. Man. I guess that's gonna do it. Stu, thanks for cruising through. Yeah.